as Alan Tom said in the last segment. Managing a marine sanctuary is really about managing people and not the animals in the sanctuary. The Hawaiians have a word for responsibility that I think applies here. That word is kuleana. There are approximately 1,400,000 people living in the main Hawaiian Islands. Nearly a million live on the island of Oahu, which many consider to be the economic engine of our entire state. Like most urban areas across the planet, people are attracted to cities because they offer employment and the opportunities that come with this lifestyle. Unfortunately on Oahu, there are only so many ideal places to build homes, businesses, and the essential infrastructure of a modern city. What has happened on Oahu and other islands like Maui, homes and other structures were built on floodplains and areas susceptible to high water. The flooding solution, which more planners are now acknowledging to be out of date or archaic, was to build large, smooth, concrete structures that divert and channel huge amounts of water, sediment, and pollutants directly into the ocean. Post-Western contact diversion of Hawaii's fresh water from our mountains, rivers, and streams started about a century and a half ago. The cultivation of sugarcane on Oahu and most of the main islands in large part was made possible by diverting fresh water. Several waves of immigrants from Asia and Europe were recruited to maintain the fields, harvest, extract, and refine the sugar. A vast series of tunnels, viaducts, and ditches diverted the water from our mountains down into the once arid plains and away from the natural flow of our rivers and streams into our nearshore waters. There are several other introduced elements that have impacted the water quality of our streams, rivers, and nearshore areas. The first of these was the introduction of the ungulates to Hawaii. Before this introduction, Hawaii had two mammal species, a bat and a Hawaiian monk seal. Feral ungulates create huge challenges for our conservation professionals. Left unchecked, these animals have the potential to not only alter the water capturing ability of our native forests, they can and have negatively impacted the health of our coral reefs, which in turn can affect our visitor industry and the economy of our state. Another introduced invasive element are several plant species that have displaced much of our native forests. Myconia, seen here on Maui in the Hana area, has a track record of ruining large areas of native forests in French Polynesia. Brought here is an ornamental plant. It has since gone wild and can be found on many of the main islands. Another plant, strawberry guava, has in vast areas reduced the forest into a mono-species environment. Growing in nearly impenetrable thickets, this plant has succeeded in replacing native plants that took millions of years to evolve and adapt. Perhaps the greatest threat of the strawberry guava is the greater thirst for fresh water. This plant requires and removes about 30% more water than our native species. As we mentioned earlier, the first people of these islands through trial and error and feast and famine got to a place where they understood the intrinsic value of healthy forests and clean, abundant water. <laughs> 